Welcome everyone to Buy, Hold, Sell. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We're going to have a special report all about love and money. It's no secret that nearly half of all marriages, first time marriages, end in divorce. The number one reason, because of money. Money discrepancies, money arguments, just a lot of friction between couples when it comes to talking about our favorite subject. So I wanted to go to the expert among experts. I went to Nicole Middendorf and I asked her her thoughts on this and you won't believe it, she actually has an online course to help couples have this discussion, which isn't always the easiest discussion to have, but Nicole has put together a program that we think is gonna make couples and this, this subject a lot easier for them to go over. So welcome to the show, Nicole. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, you know, you, I have so much respect for you. I know that you have, a, you, you have your, your own personal story and professionally, you're trying to really be, uh, move the needle, I guess, to help couples really get over this, the, uh, the wave of having this, this discussion, because it's not an easy discussion, no matter who you are. And, and, so, and then when you have married couples, you might have one who is a primary uh, wage earner, and then having to have uh, discussions with somebody else. There's a, there's a lot of issues right there. I take it that you probably, you started this program probably because several of your clients are going through something similar. Yeah, I, when I started writing my fifth book, it was on dating and money because I had been single for a number of years and not having success. And there was always this awkwardness when you go on a date, like who pays for the date? And I just, I found it very fascinating. I went to social media and started doing some research of like, who should pay? Why should they pay? How do couples have these conversations about money? And so as I was writing this book, specifically on dating and money, a couple of my clients asked me and more or less said, they're like, Nicole, do you, don't you realize like you saved our marriage? And it kind of gave me this aha moment of like, wow, you know, I would joke like for years, like, yes, I'm a wealth advisor, but many days I feel like a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, wow, like I actually am like a marriage therapist. <laughs> like I changed these That's great. lives. And so the book then, it, it still was, it's titled Who Pays? Navigating Love and Money. It's focused on the dating, but I then added in like, okay, blended families chapter and like, okay, you're married. Like, how do you have these whole conversations about money? And it's what is your relationship with money with yourself? Like digging into what's your money memory? And then it's also looking at your significant other and what's their money memory, because sometimes people don't grow up in the same kind of environments, you know, and things are completely different today than they were years ago. And so not only do you have the age dynamic or the environment that you grew up with, but some people grew up like, I mean, I, I was raised like, don't have any debt <laughs> and right. I was also raised like, you need to take care of you and don't ever expect anyone to pay for anything for you. And some people aren't ra weren't raised that way. And so it's all about understanding how were you raised about money and what are your deep money values, your thoughts, your feelings. And then if you're in a relationship, how does that person <laughs> that you're in the relationship with, how were they raised and how did they think about money? Because, you know, on the surface, we're always like, oh, someone's a spender, someone's a saver. Eh, let's be honest, we all are spenders. <laughs> we just spend right. money on different things. And, you know, stereotypically, men are spending money at a golf course and women are spending money at the spa and shopping. But we're, we're all spending money. We're just spending things, uh, spending money on the things that we value and that are important to us. And we need to understand what that is, but also then respect the other person and the relationship, what their values are. That's right. Well, I got to say, I mean, personally, I guess I'm a traditionalist. I mean, you talk about who's paying for the date. I would always think that the man would have paid for the date. But but when it comes to the actual having being a couple and being a married couple, the woman of the household does tend to be the accountant of the household. She's going to make sure, you know, little Bobby's got his clothes, has his clothes, uh, you know, may, maybe take care of the house as far as the needs there, take care of herself. But then maybe the husband afterwards gets, uh, gets maybe a little piece of that pie. But ultimately, though, having that discussion, that conversation uh, amongst each other isn't an, always, isn't an easy topic because somebody usually is the primary breadwinner. And therefore, if you start thinking, OK, let's start talking about installing a pool in the backyard, it's not always easy to do. So how do you talk about this with couples? I mean, it sounds like 
you're working as a financial doctor or financial therapist. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I can just see it. You're sitting there, you know, you, you have the glasses, you're holding the pen and you open up the folder and you're, you're looking at their chart. And therefore you're saying, <laughs> look, this is what you have. This is what you're going to need going forward. But there's, but when you have these couples in your, in your office, I mean, do you see that friction? Do you feel it? And do oh, you, absolutely. I mean, how are they afterwards? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I, I have a, a client, he, um, I helped him actually through his first divorce and then he got remarried and, um, and, and I, he was remarried a handful of years ago and I now manage the money for him and his wife. And he emailed me and he's like, I need some help. He's like, I can't get divorced again. Like, I'm not going to have this happen. And so that was specifically the whole reason that they came in. And so the whole conversation, I don't ever believe there's like a one size fits all. Like every couple's different. How you think about money is differently. And so that's where it's figuring out, okay, how are you doing? I ask those questions. Like, how are you doing things now? And this particular couple, they have two homes. And so the one house in one state is her responsibility. And then the other house in the other state is his responsibility. But where she's all upset is the one that's his responsibility he decided to put in a pool and <laughs> all of these things <laughs> and spend more money that she's then having to contribute for other <laughs> for other mm -hmm. things. And so, you know, they both have this attitude, well, we both make a lot of money and we're, you know, I'm responsible for this. And so these are the choices that right. I make. And so that's where it's, you know, what how we came up with the end of the conclusion. They were going to set up a joint account because they keep everything separate with these homes. They were going to set up a joint account. And they were going to then put a certain dollar amount in that joint account. And that would be when they go out to eat and they go out. Because what happens is she or he, like they always want, they go out a lot. They always want to go out, but it comes to, they're married, but the bill comes. And it's like this stressful moment for everyone of who pays. And it's like this tug of war. And it totally ruins the dynamic of like why you went out in the first place. Right. And, and it totally ruins the dynamic of your relationship. And I'm like, okay, you need to date. Like you need to go out. So they're each going to put a certain dollar amount. And that is the account that they're going to go use to travel and to go out and to do those things so they can have those experiences. It's all about having a conversation about what your wants are, what your values are, and then getting a budget, that dreaded B word, and getting things implemented so that you can have that lifestyle that you want, but be respectful to yourself, let alone your significant other. So uh, I, I do know couples that have done this. They'll have the separate accounts. Then they have the, com the, the I would say, the, um, the discretionary budget account where you can use that for maybe trips or, um, or going out to dinner or what, whatever. But when it comes to things about children, when you start incorporating possibly um, you, you might have a, a child who's playing in a sport at an, at an elite level, there's a lot of costs, a lot of fees, a lot of travel costs that go along with that. Then you have that they go to private school, you have tuition, plus don't forget college, you know, or how are you saving for college? It's interesting, that seems to be the one issue that once you incorporate that dynamic, who's saving what, what are they doing, especially if one of the earners, even though you might have dual incomes, they might one might be earning more than the other. How do you talk to couples about that? It's all about, again, having that conversation. And so in my office, we walk through these scenarios, but we also backtrack and we stop because like when I was married, my parents paid for my college education, but I was married to someone that the parents didn't help at all. And so you're coming from two completely different perspectives. And so for me, how, I, how it happened for me, I don't believe that's how I want to do it for my kids. My kids are well known and they're, they're teenagers now, but they know I will pay for as long as they get good grades and do the various different things, I will pay for half because mm -hmm. I feel like it's so important to, for kids to have that sense of ownership and responsibility. Now, someone else may not have that same feeling or that same philosophy. And so that's where you've got to come to an agreement of private school, no private school. Like you've got to mm -hmm. be on the same page and it's all a give and take. And so in the office, it's all having this conversation. Out of the office, we came up with this deck of cards. And Look that's at that. Where, yeah, so that's where it's 52 cards. And the goal is, is that you're having a money date once a week for a year and having a conversation about money. And so these, these questions, some of them are a little bit easier <laughs> than others, 
But the concept is, is you ask yourself the question and you give an answer and then it's time for your significant other. And so just, I just randomly pulled out one. Do you ever try to keep up with the Joneses when hanging out with your friends and regret it? What are some ideas to not live beyond your means? So these are mm. innocent ways that you can have a conversation that some of your deep values and your deep thoughts about money can come out in a non-threatening <laughs> way to prevent that fight and to prevent that wanting, you know, let, let me one up the person in the relationship. Wow, that is genius, I have to say. And, um, and I would imagine that, yeah, you probably have the king and queen of hearts in that deck of cards. So uh, it's probably a, probably a lot there to have a discussion about. Uh, before we go to the break, I want to ask you, because the numbers are staggering. I mean, we, the American Psychological Association released the 2022 statistics showing that 50%, close to 50% of all first-time marriages are ending in divorce. Second-time marriages range between 60 to 67% ending in divorce. It's hard to imagine. But the majority of the divorces that are happening, at least last year, they're people that are homeowners. They're building that equity, that wealth. So I'm sure you have some stories of couples that just didn't last. Maybe the friction was just too much. Do you then counsel both of them separately or do you advise maybe one of them find another advisor at that point? It's a great question. Ironically, I'm a certified divorce financial analyst. Oh I, my goodness. Yeah, I got I got that back in 1999. I was one of the first in the state of Minnesota to get it. And um, and so I'm, you know, my goal is is to really with, and that's why I came up with these money date cards. My goal is to change that divorce rate because it it's horrible. It, you know, money is simply you can you can fix it. It's solvable. It's just a stressor. It's it's simply money is simply a vehicle to get you the things that you want in life. And so, but um, I have had, you know, I I kind of leave it up to the clients and the relationship that I have with them. You know, over the years I've had it all. I I still have clients that are divorced and both of them, I'm still managing the money for. And so, you know, and then, I mean, I, I have it that both will leave me <laughs> because they're not, they're not happy. So it just completely depends on the situation, but the whole goal is that you're on the same page and that you don't have to end up in the route of divorce. And that, you know, if anything, you can use this to help fuel to have a better relationship with money, let alone a better relationship with your significant other. That is nice. That's, that's great. Well, listen, let's leave it there on this block because coming up on the next block, Nicole, I need to talk about what you are offering as far as what's available on your website and how couples could actually get to it. But we have today on Buy, Hold, Sell Special Report about love and money. We have Nicole Middendorf from Prosper Wealth Financial in Minnetonka, Minnesota. Min Minnesota nights. That's how I always remember Toby Smith always talking about it. So we'll be right back after the break. Please stay with us. Buy, hold, sell, brought to you by Crosscheck Management. In a world where secrets have consequences and lies can't be hidden forever, immerse yourself in the gripping new thriller No Lie Lifts Forever by Todd M. Schoenberger. Join Wall Street hedge fund manager Travis Carmichael as he delves deeper into a web of corruption and conspiracy, finding himself entangled in a high-stakes game where souls are at stake, and trust is a luxury he can't afford. Critics and readers can't get enough of this heart-pounding page-turner, calling it a masterfully crafted suspense novel that will leave you breathless. No Lie Lives Forever is a masterfully crafted thriller that will leave you guessing until the very end. With its intricate plot twists and unforgettable characters, this is a must-read for fans of suspense and mystery. From the mind of acclaimed author Todd M. Schoenberger comes a novel that will challenge your perceptions and keep you turning the pages late into the night. Critics and readers alike can't get enough of No Lie Lives Forever. It's been hailed as a gripping roller coaster ride, a true page turner that will leave you breathless. Don't miss your chance to uncover the truth. Immerse yourself in the suspenseful world of No Lie Lives Forever by Todd M. Schoenberger. Available now on Amazon and at finer bookstores near you. Welcome back to Buy, Hold, Sell special report on love and money. I do have the lovely Nicole Middendorf 
from Prosper Wealth Financial joining us today. She is an expert's expert. She knows this subject very well personally and professionally, and she is here today to help us break down some of the, the data points that we have seen recently and how she can actually help. Uh, Nicole, after we ended the last break, we were talking about couples that do end up splitting. Do you ever come across a couple that when you're going through this financial analysis with them, that one of the one of them might be hiding income or hiding assets? I mean, what kind of a, um, I'm sure you got some horror stories, but do you have any uh, experience you could share with the audience? Oh yeah, no, I, I, I've seen it all <laughs> really over the years of everything. But, and I, I have seen a lot of people, um, not to pick on women, but I've seen a lot of women um, that are like, I know he's hiding money and um, he really isn't. <laughs> like, you know, that, that's the thing. There's, there's taxes that have to be paid. You know, a lot of people don't, aren't really aware of how much they're spending every single month. And so that's where a lot of this friction comes from is not necessarily having that conversation or that deep understanding of like, what, what am I actually making every month and what does mm -hmm. it actually cost us to live and where is all this money going? And so I really believe if people had a money date and had this conversation and actually had a budget that less fights would happen because people would be, you know, understanding a little bit more. But I, I think the worst story, the worst case that there was, um, was a, a man that completely was had, had like had two lives um, that like the, the, they, either of them had no clue. They were in different wow. states. Like he went to get a, a divorce here in the state of Minnesota and he ended up being married <laughs> in a state on the East coast and like had kids, like had this whole completely hidden life <laughs> somewhere else. It was just, I, I don't know. Wow. It's, it's very fascinating, the stuff that I've seen over the years. <laughs> well, that's a story of, um, of Mr. Hunt, who started Standard Oil in Dallas, Texas. And, and then he went to, uh, he also had, he had a family in Dallas, also had a family in Louisiana. And they had kids, the whole thing. And neither family knew about each other until his funeral. And I can't imagine breaking up that estate, but uh, that, that's a whole other thing. So, so one thing, because the numbers, you know, you're close to 50% on um, first time marriages ending in divorce, but it's interesting. Forbes came out with some metrics that talked about how at the higher income levels, that divorce rate actually drops. It seems that the secret number is 200,000 a year. If the household is, is earning 200,000 and adjusted gross income, the numbers actually drop from 50 to 30%. But once you hit six hundred thousand dollars, then the number starts creeping back higher. Not, it seems the sweet spots between two hundred to six hundred thousand. Of course, they didn't get into geographic where you're living and living, cost of yeah. living and everything else, the whole thing. Yeah. So when you're so in your analysis, and we'll get into a little bit how couples can go to your site and actually uh, follow through with this. But in your analysis, do you think that the higher number has to do with maybe? There's external pressures. Maybe you have a business, something like that. That's just causing more friction. Even though it's money related, it's also, I would guess, a um, an ancillary um, issue because you might be running a business and that causes more friction. Do you see that a little bit with with some of these couples? Oh, absolutely. And and the higher income, you know, those divorces take longer. They're more expensive. Um, and not to stereotype, but the man is the business owner and the wife has stayed at home and the wife, like, I mean, I have one right now, like she has no clue. The business could be worth 10 million. It could be worth mm -hmm. 60 million. Like she literally has no clue what she's going to end up with. They just do the tax wow. and she, you know, she just signs her name. She keep, you know, there's a credit card. She just spends whatever she wants every month. And so that's where people run into problems, in my opinion, on the, on the higher end is not having those conversations. I feel like maybe that's that sweet spot of the two to 600 is that people at that range are using more advice, hopefully, that they have a mm. financial advisor, that they have an estate planning attorney, that they maybe you know have multiple properties or real estate attorney, but a CPA, they have people that are involved and that they're doing some very thoughtful planning. The other thing um, that relates to the live it list, which is where everyone can find this course, um, is that the study of happiness and how much income you make. And basically, 
per person, once you make more than 75,000, so as a couple, 150,000, once you make that, like your basic needs are met. And so studies show you're not going to be any happier or not. And so that's where I would say like below that income of 200, I don't know if there's any correlation, but it's probably more stressful of like, oh my gosh, we have kids going to college and we have all these demands and there's inflation and all these various different expenses and things versus if you have that sweet spot, hopefully you're having planners, you have a financial plan, you have a budget and you're a little bit more thoughtful and having more conversations about money. Yeah, no, I I definitely can understand that. So let's talk about how couples can get help from you. So did they go to prosperwell.com and and locate? Okay. Okay. Walk walk the audience through it. Yeah. Otherwise, the best is if you go to nicolemiddendorf.com or you can just Google it. But if you go to nicolemiddendorf.com, that's where you can find the books, the courses, all of that stuff. The courses that we have, the coaching courses are on the liveitlist.com. And so we have right now the love and money course. You can get into the first section of it at no cost. We're offering that. Um, and so that's where you can kind of test it out and see and see what some of these questions are and walk through this to say like, okay, you know, what, am I a spender? Am I a saver? What's my favorite money memory? And all of these things to help you have those conversations about money. Okay, I like that a lot. Love and money, and it's it sounds like it's complimentary on the first course, so that's great. So uh, to go into nicolemiddendorf.com. Well, that's wonderful. Well, I, I know one thing about this, Nicole. This is a subject that's not going away anytime soon. It's my two favorite subjects, and not necessarily in that order either, but that's a whole other topic for another time. So we definitely want to have you back, though, for a follow-up on this special report, because as we know, when you're trying to navigate the the waters with finance and you're trying to figure out everything that's coming at you and all the headwinds it's not easy and then when you have to incorporate the personal challenges of a divorce i can't even can't even imagine so a lot lot to deal with i personally had to deal with it i know you did as well as you mentioned and um it's not easy and it it sometimes takes takes a bit of time to get through it but uh but that's what you're there for and you're there to help obviously so nicole thank you so much for joining us today on buy wholesale special report about love and money can't thank you enough for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. All right, Nicole. We'll catch you next time. Take care. You too. I mean, yeah. This time I'm going to go today. Today I'm going to go shopping. Roll it down. I am. You don't need a car to listen to SiriusXM. You can listen anywhere. You know that, right? What? Kevin Hart's Laugh Out Loud Radio. (laughs) Kevin, you could use your phone. What? What? Alexa, play Kevin Hart's Laugh Out Loud Radio on Sirius XM. What? This is how I know you're getting old. I guess that was it. What?